Now this is National Drowning Prevention Week and we're learning how to cool off from the warm temperatures with some fun water activities all while keeping safety in mind. So for more on this we're joined by GN Lee this morning at Toronto Island SUP. G I can't wait to see what you're going to get up to today. Uh, it's always a good time you <laughs> by the water I must say. <laughs> Listen, the goal this morning is not to go into the water, but yes, it's all about, you know, having fun on the water, but being safe as well. And what a beautiful spot to be in here at Toronto Island SUP. And uh, I'm joined here by Stephanie Bacalar with the Life Saving Society of Ontario. Good morning. Good morning. We want to stress that, you know, it is summer. Everybody wants to have fun on the water, but let's be safe. Absolutely. So what are some of the general tips that you can give for anybody watching at home? Yeah. yeah. So anytime that you're going out on the water, you want to think about who you're with and what their swimming abilities are. Mm -hmm. We find often that people will overestimate their swimming abilities and think, I can make it that far. So what we really want people to do whenever you're going into an open water situation is make sure you have a life jacket. Even if you don't intend to be in the water, yeah. we still want you to be prepared. A lot of um, drownings actually happen when people aren't meaning to be in the water. Right. And, and so with the life jacket, I always say wear it as opposed to holding it or wear having it, it nearby, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, wear it. Especially in a situation, obviously, you have to have it with you when you're on any type of um, stand-up paddleboard or kayak or canoe. But even if you're just swimming in open water, it's great to have those life jackets on, especially on your children. And it doesn't matter what your swimming ability is because you just never know. The water can be rough. Very unpredictable. And, and you're right. A lot of people overestimate their swimming skills. Yeah. Yeah. So we want people to stay with their family uh -huh. um, and actively supervise their children. So even if you're in a pool, even if you're in a kiddie pool in your backyard, or if you're in an open water situation like this, parents really need to learn to swim. That's a big key step to drowning prevention is everyone should learn to swim. And the Life Saving Society has actually designed swimming lessons specifically for adults. So that takes your fears and anxieties into account and, and you can learn to swim. And it's one of the best things you can do for your children. Absolutely. Talk about some of the statistics. It's pretty grim in terms of drownings. Yeah, in Canada, we see about 450 on average um, drownings each year. Uh, in Ontario specifically, we see about 152 fatal drownings. In terms of non-fatal drownings, which can range from severe impairment to some minor breathing problems, we see about 555 trips to the hospital, visits to the emergency room, and 98 hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. So when you couple those numbers together, it's a significant problem. And the thing is, drowning is preventable. And that's the key, right? Drowning is preventable. Right. Yes. So with all of that in mind, um, it's also about having fun, right? It is about <laughs> having fun. And we really want parents and their families to make great memories on the water and yeah. to enjoy their time in the water. And that's why we've created our Water Smart Parents campaign and our watersmartparents.ca website. Okay. So for anyone who wants information, they go to watersmartparents.ca. Uh, I'm going to hit the water, as you can see right now, but in our next segment, we are going to dive deeper into about life jackets, making sure they're fitting properly. It's all about having fun, but also being safe. Yeah, we're having a great time here on the water here at uh, Wards Island, and it's really about having fun, but also doing it in a safe manner. One of the biggest topics really is about life jackets and making sure they fit properly. So joining me now is Stephanie Bacalar with the Life Saving Society of Ontario. Good morning. Good morning. So I had no idea that there are actual products that you shouldn't be using on the water at all. Yes. So one of the things we don't want to see is water rings. Not in a pool, definitely not in an open water environment. These have a tendency to pop off of kids' arms. They can also pop or deflate. So okay. we avoid anything inflatable. Okay. Something like this is okay in your pool. These are not approved to go in your boat, um, but it's okay if you're holding your child and you're gonna be in a pool, that's that's all right. And that you're really making a, dis uh, a distinction here. There are different life jackets for when you're on a boat versus being yeah. in a pool Activ and open water. Different activities, yeah. exactly. So something like these puddle jumpers, these are really, really popular. Um, and that's okay if you're just in the pool and you're supervising your child, yes. you're within arm's reach, all of that stuff. You cannot take this on a boat. It is not Coast Guard approved. What about open water? Open water with rough waves and stuff, you're gonna take on more water. We recommend these only for a pool with direct adult supervision. Okay. 
Now, this is also puddle jumper technically, but it is approved um, by the Canadian Coast Guard Transport Canada. Um, you can see it zips at the back and clips at the back. Okay. So it would be considered a personal flotation device. Right. And then we have more that are your traditional here. child life jacket, your adult life jacket. Now, one thing we need you to look for is it your size? Is it the right weight? Is it Transport Canada or Canadian Coast Guard mm -hmm. approved? You'll find all the details here. This is a great option for someone who wants something lighter. It's a fanning pack, goes around your waist. It is inflatable, you pull the cord. This one's only US Coast Guard approved, so do check and make sure that they are Canadian Coast Guard approved. Okay, and fit is everything. So it let's everything. bring in Mikhail and Julian here and explain to me how do you know if it fits you properly? So as we said, first you read the inside. We've yeah. already done that. We know this is the right size for Michaela, so she's gonna put it on over her head. Do you mind helping her, Julian? Thanks. And then Julian's gonna make sure that all of her straps are nice and tight. She's gonna do up her zipper. You'll see she also has a whistle on, which is really important yes. when you're going out in open water. That is your signaling device. So you always wanna have a whistle. Now that we're clipped, Julian's gonna tighten her straps for her. Make sure it is very, very snug. All straps and buckles need to be done securely. Right. And then we're gonna do the finger test. So we're just gonna kinda do a little Check to see, does it come up to your earlobes? If it comes up to your earlobes, it is not the right fit for you. Oh. This is a perfect fit for Michaela, and okay. she is ready to hit the water. Oh, okay. And then to stress uh, the importance again of the whistle. Yeah, so the whistle is a signaling device. So as you see, we have our paddlers out on the water, and yeah. you know, we're all a little far away. If they need some help, you are gonna hear that whistle. Now you'll notice these are special whistles. These are Fox 40 whistles. Um, they are designed for use in water. You never want something with a bead or a pearl in it right. so it can actually bloat okay. in the water so not a referee whistle is okay. a no-go you want these nice fox 40s okay a lot of really helpful tips for and more information where can people go we want you to go to watersmartparents.ca we've collected all kinds of info for you to have the best time on the water okay, with your family it's all about being smart on the water we're going to take a break here on cp24 breakfast a beautiful day here at uh, wards island well, it is a beautiful morning to be on the paddle board right here uh, at Ward's Island, and I'm joined now by Julian Ganton with Toronto Island Sub. Here we go. What's up? I hey, get, I yeah. bet you get that a lot, right? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much. Um, it's a lot of fun being on the water, whether it's kayaking or stand-up paddleboard. Bert, what are some of the tips that we want to give our viewers at home? Uh, well, safety is number yeah. one. So if you're going to try any new sport, whether it's stand-up paddleboarding, kayak, canoe whatever you choose to do, yes. that you get the proper instruction on how to do that. Because yeah. it's much more challenging than it looks. It is, yeah. yeah. So when you're watching, you know, these people out here, we've, we've just done a, a bit of a lesson. We've given them lots of tips. We've been out here for a while, and they make it look easy, right? Yeah. And these, um, the people you're seeing are making it look very easy. Uh, it's not always easy. Like, it is for some people, um, but oftentimes if it's your first time, you can, you can get the shakes, yeah. you can get, you feel very unstable, you can fall off that uh, danger is much worse if you're you know, near people or docks or things like that. So there's lots of hazards and things that you have to be aware of. So a lesson is the best way to make and yourself aware of that. We're wearing um, PDFs. Uh, I guess there's a, a, a myth that if you've got the PDF and you're not a good swimmer, you can still hit the water. A lot of people show up with us um, and we have a, you know, no matter how much we tell or how hard we try to transmit that information, mm -hmm. that you must be able to uh, know how to swim, people still think that they're safe wearing a PFD, a personal flotation device, right. um, where that's not always the case. So you need to first and foremost know how to swim. If you fall off your board or boat, this isn't always going to save your life. You can still drown. Um, so, you know, get that instruction prior to actually coming out on the water. Okay, and there is a difference, for example, if you're good um, on the canoe, that doesn't tra necessarily translate on a kayak. Of course, there are some similarities. Yes. And, and that's, uh, that's great if you're going to uh, try multi-sport or if you're coming from a different background. Yeah. But it's not a substitute for a, a, for a proper lesson. Yeah. Right? And that's the key, having that yeah. proper lesson, knowing how to swim, and then, of course, wearing your PFD. You're uh. not sending an attachment, <laughs> as I said, PDF. That's you're also gonna... very common. <laughs> Especially if you work in an office. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've sent too many of those. <laughs> All right, let's have a little bit of fun. I noticed that you guys were doing a little bit of yoga on the board. 
Why don't we try one little move? This yeah. is my first time sure. kind of doing yoga on That's the board. That's a great idea. So we've okay. got a bunch of different programs, yoga yes. included. Actually, our yoga instructor is right here. Our yoga teacher, Emma. Okay. And um, maybe we try like a downward dog. So okay. A fairly easy one that we can start Let's with. Let's go for it. Maybe Emma can demonstrate. Yeah, can you demonstrate? And then I'll w walk me through it as well. So Emma is going to put her paddle down. Yep. Just so it's out of the way. Yep. And put her belly button, so her center of gravity over that handle in the board, so that little notch in the board. Okay. So when you're ready, yes. you can go up onto your toes. Oh my goodness. So roll your toes underneath. <laughs> okay. And push your hips to the sky. You can even move your feet a little farther forward. Okay. Just like you had them there. And then drop your shoulders down. Yes. Perfect. Like that? And then, and then do I dare lift a leg? You can try. <laughs> yes. If you'd like, you can move one foot just a little closer to the Ooh. inside and one up in the air just like you're doing. Oh my goodness. Oh Look at that. my goodness. That is amazing. Okay. First try. First try. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, having so much fun. Thank you for that lesson. All really good tips. If you want more information, go to watersmartparents.ca. Now, if you're looking for something to do around the city that's new, why not try disc golf? Hey, you don't need any clubs. We're live at the beach's disc golf course this morning. G. Young Lee is uh, you getting your wrists ready for this, G. There's a <laughs> lot of tossing here. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Jen. Oh. This is my absolutely first time playing a disc golf. I've never done this before, but it seems like a lot of fun. So here to give me a lesson on this incredible sport is Jeff. He's with Chainlink Disc Golf. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great day to be here by Ashbridge's Bay. Yes, perfect, perfect. Day. All right. So walk us through the Beaches Disc Golf Course here down by the water. So uh, this is. Disc golf, you can see there's nine holes mm -hmm. here, kind of stretched throughout the park. And the idea here with the disc golf is it's similar to golf. Instead of a ball and a stick, you have a frisbee. And instead of a hole in the ground, you have a suspended catching device. All right, so let's head to one of the holes here. Yeah. And um, sh explain to me how the game works. I know that it's very similar to golf. Yes. Um, but we're approaching the very first hole here, and we're going to have Kara and Sean uh, demonstrate for us. So how does the game work? So the, the game is, is similar to golf in, in, in every way. Just the only difference is you're throwing a Frisbee into that suspended catching device down there. Yeah. This is hole one. It's, uh, it's 151 feet and it's a par three. So Sean just had a really good shot and he's, yeah, he's that's a tap in birdie for him. And so when you say par three, yeah. it's basically three attempts from here. It's not like when you throw it, you go to that spot. Everything gets done right here. Well, you do your first throw from here. here. So where that disc landed yes. from Kara's throw, She'll now go to that Got disc it. and that'll be her second shot. Got it. So you're not trying to do all three shots here. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. How popular has this become? You know, it's it's been popular for a long time. Yeah. Um, it has really became popular, obviously, during COVID. Um, it was one of the few things that people could do outside. Um, but uh, yeah, we have people playing down here all the time, even in the middle of the night or even in the winter. Yeah, that's what I heard. This is, you can do this all year round. That's right. Um, and this is free? It is, yeah. The City of Toronto has six, uh, seven disc golf courses mm -hmm. uh, located around the city and they're all free to play. And I hear that Kara possibly can do a, a hole in one, a disc in one, is that true? Well, she, uh, she's aspiring to get okay. many holes in ones, yes. <laughs> I think Sean has a hole in one on this hole. Oh, he, he just said two. He's had it twice now. Okay. okay. Well, he almost had one there. Good oh, shot, Sean. Good shot, Sean. Okay, so <laughs> Jeff, show me how do you, it's not just a regular Frisbee throw. There's a technique involved. That's right. So in regular Frisbee, you're kind of kind of more throwing catch to somebody. Right. Whereas with disc golf, you're more aiming to what you want to throw it at. Okay. So you want to throw it a little bit more, uh, I guess, assertively. Okay. Um, and the way that we recommend people the, to throw it is, Kind of imagine you're starting an outboard motor or a lawnmower, so you want to kind of reach back and then pull forward. Or you can throw it forehand as well. Okay. Maybe for the camera's purposes, I'll throw forward. Oh, okay, go for it. Okay. Oh, wow, that went really far. It did, yeah. All right, I'm really bad. You can do this. I know, I really, people don't realize I'm really bad with the Frisbee, so I don't know where this is going to go. Here, I'll hold these. Yeah. Try this one first. This um, one is the one you, I think you'll do the best with. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. okay. You got and this. So it's like pulling a lawnmower cord. As hard as you can. Don't worry about the cameraman. Pretend they're not even there. You are very brave <laughs> to be standing right there because I am really bad. I'm not kidding you. Everything I would you need like a 50 handicap in this game. Okay, so lawnmower. Lawnmower. Okay, let's go. 
Nice. Oh, shot. it's not even close. Yes. So in, in disc golf, we do fist pumps. Okay. Good okay. shot. Well done. Okay. Very cool. So if anybody wants more information about uh, chain link disc golf and all the different courses, where can they go? Uh, you can always go online. Just yeah. type in chain link disc golf. Um, or you can go, uh, there's an app called UDisc. Um, and you get the app and it will show you all the courses in, uh, in the world, really, okay. to be able to play. Okay. Sounds good. We'll get the game going. Come right. on in, Kara and Sean. And we'll have more wow. down here from, oh, oh it hits the no. tree. We'll have more here from uh, Ashbridge's Bay later this morning. Well, it's accessible and it's free, which is so fantastic. So this is the beaches, a disc golf course. We're at the sixth hole. It's the prettiest because it's surrounded by trees, but it's also the most challenging. So can you imagine throwing your disc across the fairway, trying to avoid all these trees, but then you get close to the hole here. And just like golf, the short game is really important. Joining me now is Jeff from Chainlink Disc Golf. A lot of people think because you're close to the basket here, it's gonna be easy, but it's actually really challenging. It's very true. The closer you get, kind of the more nerves start to get rattled, and now you have to throw this Frisbee into the basket. Yeah, and the tricky thing is because of the chain link, uh, just because you nail it on the spot, it doesn't mean it's gonna go in the basket because it has a tendency to fall out. That's absolutely right. Yeah. You really have to hit the sweet spot when you're throwing. Um, and sometimes it goes in, sometimes it doesn't. Right. Now, of course, Karen and Sean here are pros, but what's the trick in the short game here? Well, trick is, is, is really about focus. Okay. So find what works best for you in uh, your putting and yes. then practice, 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 just yeah. like anything else. Just like golf. Just the like golf. The short game is Same really thing. important. Uh, here we go, Sean, I'm going to give it a shot. Let's go. Watch out. Oh, okay. So close. Okay, you got this one. I got this oh, one. No. Yes! Ooh, got it! Thank you so much, Jeff. I'm going to talk to Carrie here. Come on over. I want to show her disc. Tell me a little bit about this, Kara. This is a dyed disc. It was specially given to me by uh, a close friend of ours who lives in the neighborhood. Um, but you can do a lot of special things with discs yeah. and do a lot of special and beautiful dyes and this one's very special to me. Yeah, so disc dyeing is a really popular thing. You're not allowed to paint it, but you can dye it. That's right, Love yes. It. And a as lot of people get it custom made. That's right, yeah. A lot of people will um, have special discs yeah. or have very specific discs that they want to have dyed and they will get them specially done by um, different people as well. Amazing. And then I'm going to talk to Sean here, who's a pro. He, you attend a lot of the tournaments. How many yep. tournaments have you gone to? Like, what's your uh, record so far? Uh, so last year I played 27 tournaments yeah. uh, from British Columbia to Florida to Prince Edward Island and Thunder Bay and lots in the GTA. Amazing. Sean, you were explaining that there's really no set rule. You can throw it however way you want. There's different stances for the short yeah, so you can use um, a staggered stance yeah. with your feet apart, or you can do more of a straddle putt. Yeah. You can loft the disc high to try and get it in, or you can throw straight at the basket like a, like a dart. Awesome. I'm learning a lot. And you know what? They make it accessible, but they also make it easy. So as soon as you finish here at a hole, Ken, come over here. If you don't know where the next hole is, that's okay. There's an arrow right here in the basket pointing to the seventh hole and guiding you through this course. It makes it easy and accessible. So, so much fun here. If you want more information, go to chainlinkdiscgolf.com. What do you say if your Frisbee or disc goes off course? Yeah, yeah, or if there's somebody out there and you're mm -hmm. trying to get their yeah, attention, right. you either, you can, it's just like golf. You say four or Jeff, I've noticed every time you're about to uh, throw the disc, you say, Coming in? Yeah, coming in, you yeah. know, uh, just heads up. Typically, you don't throw if there's anyone out there. Yeah, that can be yeah. Out. yeah. But just in case, because you never know uh, if somebody's walking in the way. That's right. Yeah. Or you use a spotter. So typically, you play with somebody Got else. It. And then, so in that scenario, if you and I were playing, I'd say, hey, can you go up there? And it gives you an opportunity to talk to someone about disc golf. Okay, so we are at the seventh hole. This is the most challenging. Here's straight. why. Look straight ahead. Do you see all those trees? That's why this is very challenging. Jeff, with uh, chain link disc golf, I'll let you okay. hit the tee pad. A lot of pressure. And uh, Take this shot, and then we'll walk over closer to the basket. Woo! Wow! Great shot! Okay, let's walk on over. This is 207 feet. Yes. A par three. 
Um, but it's the trees that make it really challenging. That's right, yeah. This is definitely one of the hardest holes at Beaches Disc Golf. There's yeah. the trees, but you also have to throw up the hill and then it comes down behind, so it can be pretty challenging. Now, talk to me a little bit about glow-in-the-dark disc golf. That sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. So every Thursday night at Beaches, yeah. there's glow-in-the-dark disc golf, and every Wednesday night, there's uh, glow-in-the-dark disc golf at the Maryland Bell Course, and we use glow-in-the-dark discs. That's cool. So it looks like this. That must be a lot of fun. And do people really get into it? Like, oh. do they wear glow sticks? People wear glow sticks. People have lights on their bags. They have special uh, items to charge up their discs. It's a ton of fun. And then if somebody wants to get started, I know it's free to play on these courses, but talk to me about the discs, the cost, and everything involved. Yeah, it doesn't cost a lot of money to play disc golf. It's free. Usually most of the courses are free, and all you need is just a couple of discs to start. So you can get a starter pack for $30, and that would be all the discs that you need. And, but if you want to be uh, a pro at this, let's show the bag. How much does like a, a pro kit like this cost? Uh, it would be a little bit more expensive, yeah. maybe about $300 for yeah. the bag. And then, uh, yeah, you can get whatever discs you like from there. Sounds good. I love the fact that it's free and it, it's accessible. And um, again, when you show up, there's an app and it makes it really easy. Yeah, the app is called UDisc yeah. and it's a free app that allows you to uh, well, get your scorecards, yeah. keep all your records and learn about all the other courses around Ontario. Fantastic. Sean here. I think is a pro. Uh, just like golf, it there is a Masters tournament. Yep. Tell me a little bit about that. So in Flagstaff, Arizona last week, uh, about 500 players from around the world, uh, ages 40 and up, played for the Masters World Championship. The, one of my friends, Jane from Brampton, is the reigning world champion for 65 and up women. Wow, and then this uh, tours around the U.S. and it's really considered the Masters uh, Tournament of Disc. Absolutely, for, for people 40 and up. There's also the regular pro. Sounds good. Okay, so more information, chainlinkdiscgolf.com. I'm not great at throwing the Frisbee, but it is a lot of fun, and I'm learning a lot. Uh, we're here at the signature hole. This is hole nine, and look how beautiful this is. There's a leaning tree here just before you uh, reach the basket. And I love how they've incorporated the natural landscape into the design of this golf course. Jeff here with uh, Chainlink Disc Golf joins me now. I love the leaning tree here. Yeah, it's definitely the signature hole yeah. here. Um, people kind of love to hate that tree because it blocks <laughs> a lot of the shots as they're coming in. That's true. And this is a tricky hole because you have the trees to the left and you've got the rough on the right. That's so right. just like golf, what happens if your uh, disc goes in there? So if your disc goes in the rough, you have to play it from where it lands, which takes into consideration all the different ways of throwing. Okay, but so much fun. Talk to me about how this is really an international game. There are courses around the world. Around the world, yeah. Actually, this week, the European Open is happening right now in Scandinavia. So players from around the world are, are all gathering there to have it. It's in Finland, in Nokia, Finland. Love it. All right, Sean here is a pro. That's what I say. <laughs> and you were telling me, Sean, that you don't have to naturally throw it like a traditional Frisbee. There's different ways of throwing that. Absolutely. There are no actual rules on how you throw the disc. Um, so you can throw, you can roll it along the ground. Oh, that's easy. Like that. I could do that. You totally can. Yeah. Everybody can. Um, you can throw it, you know, uh, straight up in the air get over trees. Oh, I see. That's a strategy with that. Yep. Okay, uh, let me try a roll. You just hold it any way you can. Put one finger inside the rim. Oh, nice. Hold it vertical. Yes. And just flick it. And just flick it. Just like that. Nice. The roller. I love it. I see why it makes it easy and accessible. Let's talk about women in this sport, Kara. So predominantly men who play this, but you are seeing more and more women joining the sport. Yeah, that's right. And we really do want more women to enjoy this sport. It's a wonderful way to get outside yeah. and into nature. And this place is a really nice place to learn how to play the sport and to grow the awareness with women. This year as well, the Canadian women's event was launched um, with disc golf events for women across the country um, and with women tournament directors as well. So um, we're seeing a lot of progress in that front. Yeah. 
I love it. It's a game that's open to everybody. So if you want more information, you can go to chainlinkdiscgolf.com. Again, it's free. You don't have to go online and try to get a tee time, which is really challenging for most golfers. That's what makes disc golf so fun. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Thank you. I'm going to try one more. Here we go. Should I try the going over the tree? Let's go for it. Here we go. Woo! No, no luck. <laughs>